Game preservation might be possibly the biggest threat in video games. Over time, cartridges and discs may develop bit rot, hard drives can and will fail, floppy disks will develop sector errors, source code can get lost forever. We've seen this happen before. Without the right preparation and tools, your data will be lost. On game cartridges, internal batteries will eventually run out with your save files. Worse still, batteries in other places like arcade boards may have leaked all over the PCB and caused irreparable damage. In the case of Capcom with the CPS2 and 3 arcade hardware, those batteries will run out and render your board's paperweights. Fortunately, these can now be revived. But there is another side to preservation that I think is important getting a hold of a development kit or a test kit from a studio that's long gone, or purchasing one from eBay or Craigslist where the seller was unaware of what they have. Old development kits can sometimes yield interesting rewards. The preservation of alpha or beta releases of games is just as important as finding an unreleased game. They should all fall under the same goal, to collect and preserve as much as possible. Every once in a while, someone will reach out to me on the Twitter DMs or on Facebook Messenger and say to me, hey MVG, I've come across a dev kit or a test kit for an original Xbox that potentially has some interesting stuff on the drive. Maybe it has an unreleased game or a cancelled game or a alpha or beta version of a popular game that had come out and they want to get the contents off the machine. How do I do it? Well, I'm going to walk you through one method that is very easy to do. It does require some steps, but with the right planning in place, you can set this up so you can not only extract the contents of that particular dev kit, but any other ones that you potentially may come across. You know, you may have worked at a studio or you may have come across multiple dev kits and you really just want to get everything off of them. I'm going to show you a way to do that in this video. So this is an Xbox debug kit. Developers use these to both develop and test code on before retail. They were also used by QA teams before games were sent to be certified. There are also Xbox development kits that were purely used for development. But these systems differ from retail Xboxes in a few ways. First and foremost, they allow for unsigned code to run. By definition, all code that's being developed on before being passed to certification and then signed by a private key by Microsoft is considered unsigned. Homebrew developers use debug kits to develop their code on, which can then be run on a modded Xbox. It's also possible to convert a retail Xbox into a dev kit with a bit of hacking. Second, they come with a different user interface or dashboard. It's essentially a launcher for all the games that are installed on the Xbox's hard disk. And speaking of the hard disk, that's where all the work is done. On a retail system, the Xbox's hard disk was mainly used for the dashboard, save file storage, DLC stuff like map packs, and custom audio files. On a dev kit, it's where you work from. When you compile up a project, it gets automatically copied to the Xbox's hard disk, and that's where the code runs from. The CD drive is not really needed for anything, but more on that later. Third, there are increases in things like system RAM. A retail Xbox comes with 64 megabytes of RAM. A debug or a dev kit comes with 128 megabytes. This overhead is for debugging and running things like profilers in the background, which does not impact the code being run. And fourth, and perhaps most important, there is software that normally runs on a PC or a remote device that you can use to control and access your development kit. So let's say you've got yourself a hold of something like this, which is a Xbox debug kit, and you have it in your possession and you want to extract the contents of the hard disk off of one of these puppies, where do you kind of start? Well, the first thing that I tell anyone is before you attempt to even plug this thing in and turn it on, you want to just make sure that the system is in good working order. And the way to do that is by opening up the system and making sure that the clock capacitor in the Xbox debug kit that you have here has not leaked. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with the clock capacitor, there is one particular capacitor on the Xbox's motherboard, which basically manages storage of the real-time clock that is notorious for leaking. Now, you've got to remember, these systems have been around for over 17 years, and in many cases, some of these things haven't been turned on in like 15 years. 
So there is a chance, I'm not saying it's always the case, but there is a chance that the clock capacitor inside your Xbox's debug kit has leaked and caused damage to your motherboard. So what you really wanna do first before you even consider turning on your system is making sure that the internals of the original Xbox debug or development kit that you have are in good working order. Now in this episode, I'm not going to go into opening up the system and removal of the clock capacitor. There are some great tutorials out there and I will leave a link to some of the best ones down in the description below. It's simple and easy to do and it will save you headaches later on. Many collectors will like to keep their system stock or untampered with, but please, if you do get a hold of a dev kit, the best thing that you can do is consider dumping the hard disk as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and do just that. The first thing that we need to do is access either a PC, laptop, or a virtual machine that runs Windows XP. For simplicity, I recommend running something like Hyper-V which comes with Windows 10 Professional and installing Windows XP. Now, I'm not going to tell you where to download Windows XP from, but it's out there and you can use it, I believe for 30 days before it wants you to activate and you really only need to use it for maybe a few hours. The reason why you want to use Windows XP is because remember, we are dealing with very old hardware from the early 2000s. Once Windows XP is installed, the next thing we need to do is install a copy of the Microsoft Official XDK. This is the old development kit SDK that was used to develop games with. As it's proprietary Microsoft owned, I can't disclose where to get this from. But if you Google search, you should be able to locate it. It's been 17 years, so I don't think they really mind anymore. And after all, we are attempting to preserve your data. It does not matter which version of the SDK you find and install, as we're not going to use it for anything other than interfacing with the debug kit. Go ahead and install it on your Windows XP machine. Once this is complete, you will notice an icon on the desktop called Xbox Neighborhood. This is the tool that we'll be using to interface with our development or debug kit. Assuming your Xbox is in good working order and the clock capacitor issues have been dealt with and you feel comfortable powering it up, go ahead and do so and make sure that the Xbox is plugged into your network. And just to be clear, there is no risk of the system getting banned or bricked or anything like that. The old Xbox Live system and the partner net systems are no longer active on the original Xbox. So it's perfectly safe to get your Xbox connected onto your network. So when you turn on your XDK or debug or development kit, you'll get the XDK launch. Now these are all the installed tools, utilities, games, whatever, on the Xbox's hard disk. Now, as mentioned, the XDK utilizes the Xbox's hard disk. That's where you do your development on, and that's where all your files will live. The CD drive or the DVD drive is hardly ever used on a development kit. It's only really used just to update with the latest firmwares and things like that. Now, if you've ever owned an original Xbox, you're probably familiar with custom dashboards where you can use FTP to copy files over. A development kit works a little differently and there is two different sets of IP addresses that you can configure in order to make things work. But essentially what you wanna do is go to your tools menu and then go to your network settings and you wanna to go to the debug configuration and in this area is where you wanna set the IP address of your Xbox development kit. Now, if you're running DHCP, it's most likely going to just provide you an IP address based on what your network is. But what you wanna do is make a note of the IP address that gets set for your Xbox debug kit. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now, and I'll show you what the IP address is, and then we're going to go back onto the Windows XP installation and assign that to our Xbox neighborhood. From here, things are pretty simple. Open up Xbox Neighborhood and then select Add New Xbox. When it asks you for the IP address, enter the one that you noted down from the dev kit from before. In my instance, it's 192.168.50.22. You will note that it gets added as well as the machine name, which is MVG. This means that we are connected. Now from here, when you open up this machine, you'll see the drive icons. The files that you'll be pulling down live in the E or game development partition. Opening up this partition, you'll note that the files from the XDK launcher are available here. Now it's a simple matter of selecting them and copy pasting them across in a folder on your Windows XP machine. Depending on what's on the drive, this may take a few minutes. Once this is complete, you may want to grab other files from other partitions as well. 
there may be save files that you want to preserve, but for the most part, the game dev or e-partition is the one that you want. Once the file copy process has completed, you've preserved the data off this hard disk. Excellent job. And we're done. Now, assuming that you don't want to install a virtual machine and a copy of the Microsoft SDK and run Xbox Neighborhood, there is a second approach that you can utilize that doesn't involve any of that. The second method I would recommend is to essentially use an open source Xbox Neighborhood replacement that doesn't require the official SDK and doesn't require Windows XP. Known as Viridix, it's essentially an Xbox Neighborhood replacement. It's completely open source and allows you to raw dump the entire hard disk sector by sector. This means that it will keep the FAT file system intact. This could be useful if you were wondering about previously deleted files on the drive, and this may be the best option for you. Unfortunately, while the project is open source, there isn't much weight in terms of documentation or a simple binary to download. Attempting to compile the code up myself worked, but it wasn't really able to use the app at all, and it just left me with this blank screen. If someone who's involved in this project knows more, please reach out as I do believe that this option would be preferred over the Xbox neighborhood method, but as it stands, I was not able to try this out myself. The third option is one that I would recommend only as a last resort and may not work for everyone. Because a debug or a development kit runs unsigned code, it's possible to burn a copy of an Xbox dashboard like Avalanche onto a CD and boot into it. The problem is some Xbox drives have trouble reading burnt CDs or DVDs, so your mileage may vary. But for this to work, simply build an ISO of the dashboard, and I'm using Avalanche as an example here, and burn it onto a CD. When you insert the CD, it should boot directly into it or show up in your XDK launcher. Now, rather than using Xbox Neighborhood, we can use FT. You can access the e-partition and copy across the contents. This method may be something that you try first before the XTK method. But keep in mind with the FTP method, there may be a possibility that it's writing cache files to the Xbox's hard disk. We'd much prefer to keep this drive unaltered so we don't lose any potentially deleted files, if that's what you were interested in. So once you've got your files dumped and everything is looking good, where do you go from here? Well, the first thing that I would do personally is get all your files zipped up and uploaded into the cloud, either using Google Drive or archive.org, at least as a first step. Now, I've been told that archive.org is not safe from a preservation perspective. I'm not really too privy to the details of that, but what you really want to do is reach out to someone who is involved with preservation either an organization or someone that's well known. And I'm going to leave a link to a couple of folks that I'm familiar with in the description below, and they can certainly help you out. The other thing that they will provide is information on what you have. It's potentially possible that you're sitting on something that's unreleased, or it's also likely that you may be sitting on something that has already been dumped and it's already been released out into the wild. So they really will help you kind of guide you through that process and make you understand what you have. And, you know, for me, I would be someone that, you know, if you want to reach out to me and ask, you know, is this game available? Has it been dumped before? I can definitely help with that information. But I will tell you guys, I'm not an expert in this. Like I said, there are other folks out there that are a lot more versed in this stuff than I am, even though I've got, you know, obviously history with the OG Xbox. Well, guys, we're going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. Leave me a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.